Joe the Creep, written by Writer Josh. I've worked a lot at odd jobs over the years. What can I say? The economy sucks. My level of education is not sufficient to get hired anywhere that makes the big bucks. For a long time, I cut grass, shoveled sidewalks, and flipped burgers. But then, there was the time I scored the position as a night watchman at a local office complex. The Manyard Building. It had been around for a while. It was an old brick structure that I've driven past for years, barely even looking at it. But when times got really lean, I found myself in its lobby, interviewing for a position. There wasn't much to the night watchman job. The building has three floors and a basement, most of which is viewable from a bank of monitors in the back room. The building is in a pretty quiet area of town, and there's nothing in it to steal. So really, I discovered on my first shift that the job was a pretty low-key sort of job. Jerry showed me the ropes, along with the guy I'd be sharing part of my shift with, a younger guy named Mike. Jerry was nearing 60, if he wasn't already past it, and the best you'd ever get out of him was 45 and holding. Mike was younger than me, he didn't even look like he had been out of high school very long. Jerry was the afternoon security guard, who technically was in charge of Mike and I which is to say that he made sure that we kept our sheets properly and caught hell if we didn't. But he didn't actually have any authority over us, and he never acted like he did. If anything, it was more like three guys who did the same job. Jerry did his from 4pm to midnight, Mike came on duty at 5pm, which was when the business was officially over, and stayed until about 1am, and I started at midnight and finished at 8am. Officially opening the doors in the morning to let in Lester, the morning security guard, whom I rarely interacted with. Within a week, I fit into the rhythm and pace very easily. Jerry and Mike were fun guys. I'd get in there in time to hang out with both of the men for a bit, share a smoke with Mike and Jerry before Jerry took off for the night, and then hung out, joked, smoked, and argued with Mike until he left. At which point, I'd usually pick up a novel, play games on my phone, or just about anything to keep my mind occupied until morning. There were duties other than monitoring the station, of course. Every hour on the hour, a full circuit of each floor in the basement was necessary. And I was to mark on a sheet that I had done so, and put an AC for all clear next to my name. Unless I'd found something out of the ordinary, which rarely happened. I was told that, at worst, I would have to write down that a light needed replacing or there was a drip in the ceiling somewhere. Mike? Mike wasn't a stickler for doing his rounds, and Jerry didn't care if we missed a few corners. But I usually did my best to ensure that my duty had been done. After all, it was the only part of the job that actually felt like work. Plus, I was pretty sure that if I missed something big, it would be recorded by the cameras that I didn't do my rounds. About three weeks into the job, I first heard the term Joe the Creep. Jerry said it in response to something Mike had said. When I think back to the conversation, I can't really recall what Mike said to prompt him to it, but Jerry had laughed and said, yeah, I'm going to let Joe the Creep get me too. And Mike laughed back in response. I didn't pay too much attention then, but after a couple of references to Joe the Creep, I started to get a little curious. It would always be a snide reference of some sort, like, don't take too long in the toilet, Mike, Joe the Creep is probably watching you masturbate, or shower before the next shift, okay, Jerry, you're starting to smell like Joe the Creep, or even, dude, the only one interested in your story is Joe the Creep. The straw that broke the camel's back happened on my last night there. I had been there for just over three months. You'll understand why I quit the next morning in a bit. I was running slightly behind. The bus was late. Mike and Jerry were having a smoke. I walked up to join them. Everything was normal for the first bit. Jerry was telling an off-color joke and Mike was laughing and hawking spit between each huff. They both greeted me, like always, when I walked up to the smoking area. You're a bit late, 
said Jerry. For a little bit, I wondered if Joe the Creep got you. Mike snorted. Dude, I hear you guys talking about Joe the Creep all the time, I said. But you've never bothered to tell me who the hell he is. Jerry cocked an eyebrow. Really? I was pretty sure I told you about him on your first day. Nope, but you guys reference him enough. What's up with that? Mike smirked and said, Old Joe the Creep died in the deep. Jerry told me about him. I never met the guy personally. So, he was a real person. That was an interesting turn. Up until now, he just kind of seemed like a story. An in-joke among the staff. I looked at Jerry and said, Well? Jerry took a long puff of his smoke and smiled, looking a little abashed. Could have sworn I told you, but oh well. Joe was a guy who used to work here back in... I want to say the mid-80s, but it could have been the late 70s. He wasn't here that long, but while he was here, he made an impression. He didn't talk much, or at least not to other people. He would come in staring at the floor and mumbling to himself. He took his lunch breaks alone and didn't speak to anyone unless they spoke to him first. Didn't even seem to realize that others were around. You've worked with guys like that, right? Where something just seems a little off? Sure, I said. Well, Joe, it turns out, was actually a bit of a creep. He kept writing stuff down in a little notebook. He would never let the rest of us see it. But one day, he accidentally dropped it while in the elevator. And there was a woman who worked here then. Her name was Sue, I think. And she saw what was in the notebook, and it was enough to make her notify HR about him. I wasn't all that surprised, but I pretended to be. Really? What was in it? Sue wasn't allowed to talk about it, but boy did HR tear him a new one. He got a one-week suspension, and when he came back, he was even worse than before. Now he would just stare at people, hardly ever blinking. Until they looked at him, then he would look away. He did this to me once, but I told him if I ever caught him looking at me again, we'd have it out in the parking lot. But then the day came when a woman came shrieking out of the filing room. Turned out that Joe was in there, hiding behind the cabinets, staring at her. Her eye managed to accidentally land on him, and he hissed at her. Nobody saw it but her, but I never had any trouble believing her. And they did find Joe in the copy room still behind the cabinets. Needless to say, he was fired on the spot, and he asked if he could go get some of his personal stuff out of the basement before he left. I think I know where this is going, I said. Yeah, probably, said Jerry. Back then, they didn't even think about sending someone down with him. They just had a guard wait at the top of the steps. I mean, you know, there's only one flight of stairs to go down there. And don't tell me, I said. They found him dead. Clichéd, isn't it? Jerry said. Yep, hanging by his belt. That part I can verify, because when they were carrying out his body, the sheet slipped a little and I saw the ligature marks. And that was the end of Joe the Creep. Or so they say. Or so they say, I mimicked wiggling my eyebrows. Don't tell me, Joe the Creep haunts the basement to this very day. Well, that's the, that's the silly part, said Jerry. See, there's a rumor that started that he stashed the notebook down there, and that he was going to get it, but for some reason, he decided to hang himself instead. And, just like any other story, it's just sort of grown since. Now, there's even a rhyme that you're not supposed to say. I laughed. This is all too much. Sure, old buildings had legends, right. But this was pure hokum. A rhyme, I said. Like what? Well, let me see if I can remember, said Jerry. If you go to the top of the stairs, you're supposed to look down into the darkness without turning on the light and say, Joe the Creep, who died in the deep. I'm coming downstairs, so don't make a peep. It's kid stuff, really. I don't even remember who made it up. Someone with a creative mind, I guess, I said. But hey, don't tell me you never tried to rhyme. At that, Jerry's face got a bit red, and he seemed to choke on his smoke. Well, I... he began. Well, not... not really, but... 
I, I started to once. But, well, I don't like playing with stuff like that. Never did the Bloody Mary trick either. I had been down in the basement lots of times and nothing ever happened. So why play around and invite something like that, right? Something felt cold going up my neck. Up until that moment, it had all seemed like an amusing story. But Jerry's reaction was real. He believed in Joe the Creep. Believed it enough to never test the legend, apparently. We finished our smokes and went inside. When we got to the security booth, Jerry started packing up his stuff, and I realized that we were as quiet as the grave. We were usually still laughing and joking at this point. Jerry even stayed quiet as he was heading out, not even saying goodnight. Mike must have noticed because a few seconds later, he leapt up and followed him out. I sat at the station monitors and stared at various rooms as they flashed by, and I thought, Joe the Creep, how silly. But somehow the image of Joe watching through the crack in the filing cabinets of some crazy man hissing as I spotted him stayed with me. Joe the Creep, who died in the deep, don't close your eyes or he'll kill you in your sleep. I wasn't even helping myself by adding the rhyme. Mike came back a few moments later. I wasn't really in a laughing mood yet, but he was. He usually was. Well, let's go on our first circuit, he said. This surprised me, because Mike was never the guy suggesting that we get up and do a circuit. He often sat at the station while I did him alone. This time, he was eager to start it. What's gotten into you? I asked. Nothing, said Mike. But he gave himself away a half second later. Hey, let's start with the basement this time, okay? Usually, the basement was last. Ah, oh, for the love of- You want to say the stupid rhyme, don't you? I said. <laughs> no, he said, grinning again. We were almost at the basement doors. You're gonna say it. I am doing no such thing, I said. I'm a grown man. Yeah, okay, Mike said. Who'd have thought you were a chicken? You're not going to goad me into it by playing your little name-calling games. I said, what are you, 15? Well, listen, man, Mike said. If you don't say it, I'm going to say it. But then, I'm not going down there. So it's up to you, if you want to leave it off the rounds for the night. I had just about had it with Mike's idiocy. When I realized that we were standing in front of the doors already, Mike threw them open and called out into the dark. Joe the Creep, who died in the deep. I'm coming downstairs, so don't make a peep. He looked back at me with a mocking grin. All yours, he said. Fuck you, I replied as I shut the door. So you're not checking the basement, asked Mike. It's part of your job, you know. You've skipped out on a majority of your job every night that I worked with you, I said. So this one night, you'll forgive me if I skip out on... One part of mine. I knew you were scared, said Mike. You believe the legend, don't you? You're practically shitting in your drawers at the idea of old Joe the Creep coming for you. I wasn't listening. I headed back to the monitor station and let Mike do the rounds by himself for the rest of his shift, since he's going to act like that. Oddly enough, he did. By the time the shift was over, he had done two full circuits of all the floors. All of them. I noticed, except the basement, he didn't even so much as crack the doors for the rest of the night. Finally, he left, tossing me a smirky, don't let Joe the creep get you, over his shoulder before he was gone. I heard the front door closing a few minutes later. And now, I was completely alone. It was dark outside. It was dark inside. Outside, the wind was howling. Within the building... Nothing but pure silence. I realized that I was holding my breath. How stupid of me. Well, I decided enough was enough. I was no child to believe such silly stories. It was time for me to man up and do my job. I grabbed my flashlight and notebook and headed towards the stairs. I made my circuit of the top floor, second floor, nothing out of the ordinary. The ground floor where I started, all clear as well. 
The basement door stayed closed, though, their presence looming in my mind. Time to get it over with. I opened up the doors and immediately flicked on the switch. The basement was a fairly large room, but smaller in floor space than the above ground floors. A bank of 12 lights for the entire room were spread out over the ceiling. None of them were all that powerful. The basement was a dark room at the best of times. I think about the level of a subground bar at night. The stairs were deep, and they went down surprisingly far. There were stacks of shelves that stood anywhere from 10 to 15 feet tall, and the ceiling stood a good 10 to 15 feet above that. I was pretty far underground. Joe the Creep, who died in the deep. I started my circuit. There were 20 rows. From each one, the next one was only visible through the tiny spaces between the stacked file boxes. I was midway through the third row when I saw something on one of the shelves. Who knows how many times I'd walked past it and just never noticed. It was a small leather-bound journal, the kind an accountant might keep. Before I knew what I was doing, I was pulling it down to look through it in scrawled handwriting on multiple pages filled with entries. All the ink was in red. As I read them, I realized that if I saw this from a co-worker, I would call the police, not HR. Jane Grossman bumped into me coming out of the ladies' room, didn't even say excuse me. A cartoon of a woman's head was crudely drawn next to it. Red dots were underneath it and I realized that they were meant to represent dripping blood. Her eyes were angry spirals of red. Steve Linden took my parking space today. He didn't even apologize. Next to it was a picture of a crude man with a red hole leaking from his chest. Nancy Palmero grabbed a handful of forks for everyone to eat a piece of John's birthday cake, but there wasn't even a fork left for me. I was forced to use my hands, like some kind of animal. He had underlined the last part. The photo was a woman on all fours and a talk balloon above her head with the words, Arf, Arf. Page after page after page of petty, tiny grievances. He never said in words what he wanted to do in retaliation, but the drawings implied enough. I began to notice a stink in the air. No. Not a stink. A fetid stench. It was like someone had set off ten stink bombs right next to me. The air had... The air had grown still. And I heard something in the silence. A... Uh, that sounded wet and rubbery. I had shown my flashlight down the row and... I, I saw movement in the row next to me. My blood froze and I struggled to breathe. The figure continued to walk inexorably down the row. Within a few short minutes, it would round the corner and I would be face to face with it. It turned in my direction, and my flashlight beam caught it. Barely human features glared back at me. The intense, fevered eyes of a madman burned through me. A hissing sound filled the air. My feet came unglued from their spot and I bolted out of the row at top speed. The thing was barely moving, apparently expecting me to remain frozen in fear. I made it to the steps and locked the door at the top once I ascended. I spent the rest of my shift with all the lights on around the monitor desk, wide awake, watching every corner for movement. I was still like that when Lester came and I let him in. My hand was still shaking when I wrote A.C. on all of the hour entries on the sheet. As I was gathering my things, preparing to leave, eager to get home, Jerry came into the office. It wasn't like him to come in before his shift started. Hey, I said, what's up? His eyes got large and he looked at me and said, ah, oh, jeez. Listen, man, I, I owe you an apology. For what? I asked. Well, when we told you the story of Joe the Creep, you looked a little spooked. And Mike? Well, Mike came out and asked me if I'd help him play a joke on you. It seemed harmless enough, so I agreed. Wait, I said. This whole thing has been a joke? 
I thought of the thing in the row next to me, of the journal that must have been planted for me to find, and of the stench of something long dead. Not all of it, he said, but if you heard something weird last night, someone trying to get into the back or something like that, it was just us. I thought it would be fun to give you a little scare. Heard? I exclaimed. I didn't just hear you, idiots. I saw you. What did you do? Rig up some kind of Halloween prop and let off stink bombs? That wasn't funny. I've never been so scared in my life. What? Jerry seemed very confused. We planned on coming in the back door while you were doing rounds to scare you. But there's something wrong with the lock on the back door. We couldn't get it open. We never even got in the building, and Mike just left. I just felt bad and wanted to apologize. Silently, I handed him my security card and walked out for the last time. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I would like to thank Dan R., Paul Z., Mr. Swiston, Official Jerboa, Chaos X, JY, Pyromancer, Hayden MH, and Ethan A. Guys, I really appreciate it. You $10 and above patrons are legendary, and you $5 and above ones are pretty damn good too. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to start a new series coming soon, so if content slows down a little bit, just know that I am still working on something, just not getting something done every day. And if you want access to some Patreon-only content, all that stuff, have your name read off, all that jazz, please sign up for the patron down in the description. I really appreciate it, guys.